here we go. We're here and this is it. It's all about sleep. For those of you that just joined on Facebook, this is the first time actually I've done Facebook and I've also done Instagram at exactly the same time. So hopefully it works. If it doesn't work, well, you maybe let me know. But this show this week, folks, is gonna be all about sleep. If you are having any issues with your sleep, drop it in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Who sleeps well, who sleeps deep, who has a problem sleeping? Sleep is, for me, one of the main things. Oh yeah, problem on Facebook. Not sure why that's happened. Anyway, we're still live here on Instagram. Instagram Live works so much better than Facebook Live. By the way, if you haven't already checked it out, we're gonna put this video, I'm gonna put this video up on my Instagram TV. Who is using Instagram TV? Do you like it? Is it any good? Is it interesting? I don't know what's going on there. I posted a few things over on Instagram TV. If you do use Instagram TV, you do like Instagram TV, let me know. And I'll put this stuff up on there as well. I'm just gonna go live again here on Facebook as well. This show is only gonna be 10 minutes this week. I'm not sure how I'm gonna fit it all in. We're talking about sleep. The pyramid of performance, go live. The pyramid of performance that I always talk about, at the bottom of the pyramid, we're all about nutrition. That's number one. That props up all of your performance in life. Number two is sleep. That's why we're gonna focus a lot on sleep today. This show is all about sleep, how much you need, how to prepare best for sleep, why you need sleep as well. And at the top of the pyramid is movement, is actually the fitness that we do. So if you don't get the basis right, nutrition, we're not gonna talk about that today. We've spoken about that a lot in the last few weeks. Go and check out those shows, they're super good. We're gonna talk about sleep. Now, a lot of you will know that when you, Facebook sucks by the way, Facebook video is not good. I'll post this one to Facebook and we'll focus right here on you guys. Now, any, if you ask anyone, and this is where I really wanna kick this off, when you sleep more, do you feel better? The answer, undoubtedly, is yes. Every single time you sleep more, you feel a lot better. So why are we not sleeping more? You can actually sleep your way to better fitness. You can sleep your way to better performance, not only physically, but better mental performance as well, just by prioritizing your sleep. If you wanna perform, if you wanna lose weight, if you wanna get fitter, stronger, healthier, look better, all of the above, you need to make sure that you're prioritizing sleep. Like this is absolutely paramount to your overall performance in life. So people should know that they're doing that. Hello boss, what's up bro? So you should know that sleep is just so, so important. I wanna go into, and that's what I need you to buy into to make this show work. So you're gonna trust me, sleep is absolutely paramount to our physical performance in all areas of life, mental performance, brain function and everything. So what I wanna address is I wanna address why people are not sleeping properly. And I put it into two or three different categories. First category is that you're overtired, your body is too stressed, you've got elevated levels of cortisol, which is hindering you, not helping you, hindering you from getting to sleep. That's why actually you might feel super tired, you might have had a really busy day, super stressful day, but you lay in bed, your cortisol levels are super, super, super high. I find this a lot in people that are doing, are working out, are doing fitness late at night or in the evening. For example, if you do a workout about 7 p.m. and then you try and go to sleep by 9 p.m., your endorphins are going crazy, your cortisol level is super high, you need time for it to come down, you need your body to chill, to relax, then you'll be able to go to sleep. So what you really need is you need to stop working out late at night if you're having issues sleeping. Like a lot of people will say to me, I'm having issues sleeping, I train late at night. Okay, drop that training late at night, move it to the morning and you'll feel a lot better. So that's the physical side. Mental stimulation, as Carlin just put in the comments there, mental stimulation before bed or in those hours leading up to bed is causing us all sorts of issues when it comes to sleep and the quality of the sleep you're getting or the ability that you're having to basically fall asleep or the inability you're having to fall asleep. Things like this, what I mean is, if you use email, which a lot of us do, stop your email at a certain time, stop it five or six in the afternoon. There is nothing worse than just before you go to bed, you check your email, it's from your boss, he tells you you've got a meeting tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m., no agenda. Absolutely dying, you can't sleep. What have I done wrong? It's terrible, it's the end of the world, I'm gonna lose my job. You go in the next morning and it gives you a pay rise. 
happens though. Not, nothing will change in that time from when you leave work to when you get there the next morning if you don't check your email. Number one thing, do not check your email after a certain time of day. Set yourself a curfew, it could be six o'clock, it could be seven o'clock, and don't get involved in it. It will cause you additional stress, anxiety, and sometimes, most of the time, for absolutely no reason. When we talk about the device that you get your email from, it's a screen like you're looking into right now, all good at this time of day. When it gets later in the day, that blue light is actually keeping us awake. The light that it emits keeps us awake and does things to your eyes and there into your <laughs> don't support Germany's football team. Yeah, don't support Germany's football team anyway. Support England, obviously. Um, or New Zealand, are they even in it? So the light that we're getting is keep on telling us that actually it's daytime. It's waking us up. So if you've got your device in the last few minutes before you go to bed, the signal's coming in simple terms, the signal's coming from your device into your eyes, onto your brain, is that it's daytime. So your brain starts to wake up. Put your devices away. One thing that does cause anxiety as well, and we've seen it a lot in the age of social media, is what happens on social media, okay? Technology's moving, social media. Stop checking your Instagram, stop checking Facebook at night, and stop giving a shit about what everyone else is doing, and getting stressed out that such and such is at the pub and I'm not there, and I'm going to bed, but then I can't go to bed because I've got FOMO. Don't check it, same thing. Put all, if I could say one thing to make sure you get better sleep, it's just to absolutely prepare better for your sleep. That's really one of the main things that I wanna get through in this short show. I want people to prepare better for their sleep by not stressing their bodies out late at night and also not having this tech meltdown or this information overload and stimulation through email, through social media, through phone calls, through WhatsApp messages. Find a discipline, get home, 6.30, 7 o'clock, maybe you get home a little bit later than that, that's fine. Turn your phone off, put it on airplane mode, or just set a time that you're actually not gonna use that device anymore. There's loads of stuff going on there that is actually keeping you awake. Another thing that's keeping you awake, so the third thing really that's keeping you awake that I wanna hit on today is the food that you're eating in the hours before you're going to bed. What I like to see is less, I like to see less sugary stuff anyway, but you've seen it with kids, and this is where actually as adults, I think we're, we're all super smart, we're just acting like morons, because what we're doing is we're feeding ourselves something that could be quite sweet and raising our insulin levels close to bedtime and then wondering why we can't sleep. Things that absolutely wake you up, like sugar, like caffeine, just stop them. Stop them about lunchtime, and then you will not have any issues falling asleep if you address those other two things. The other two things were when you work out, bringing cortisol levels down before you try and go to bed, and also what you're doing, how you're activating your brain, be it through technology or other sources, emails, phone calls, all that stuff, in the time, in the immediate time before you go to bed. I want you to try and cut all of that out. Food-wise then, you'll say, well, what should I eat? What I like to see is more of a fat-based diet closer to bedtime. So your evening meal would have a decent amount of fat in it. What I find that does, and what it does do, read Tim Ferriss' book, The Selenium in Brazil Nuts. He loves Brazil Nuts, and he knows a lot more than I know. He loves Brazil Nuts, he loves coconut oil just before bed for that fat, for the brain health, actually chills you out a little bit. One thing, also, I don't use it, but a lot of people use something like a chamomile tea close to the bedtime. I think that's something that either works for you or doesn't work for you. I've never found the need for it. I go to bed and I sleep pretty good. My protocol is about 30 to 45 minutes before bed. I will turn off all devices and then I'll obviously eat. I don't eat a lot of stuff that's gonna spike my insulin, so I won't have that real kick. I'll never have caffeine after about two o'clock in the day. I don't want that in my body. And then I'm able to fall asleep by about 7.30, 8.30, sometimes late as nine o'clock. That's why you're not falling asleep. Those are things you can do. Two more things I want to get through in this, in this show. Set a sleep target. I want you to sleep between seven to eight hours a night. Set a target and measure your performance against your target. I go to bed eight hours before I'm going to get up. That's what I do. If I'm getting up at 4.30, I'm in bed at 8.30. And that is the discipline that I set. Otherwise, I won't get up at 4.30. I won't organize something for the next day if I know that I'm gonna be late. I'll push it out a little bit. Same if I know I have to get up early, I won't organize anything for the previous evening. It's actually super, super straightforward. Take your target at the end of the week, measure it up, have you hit it? If not, catch up on your sleep at the weekend. 
I think that's something that we can do. We can catch up, we can sleep a little bit more. The bottom line here, and this is kind of my final thoughts for today. I know this is shorter than normal, but I'm getting it this short, so we can put it on Instagram TV, because you all love Instagram TV, la. Now, I want you to prioritize it. As I open with, it is one of the pinnacle parts of performance. It's one of the things that's gonna drive your performance. It's gonna help you recover better. It's gonna help you feel better, which is gonna help you train harder, look better. Everything gets better when your sleep is good. You have to, have to, have to make it a priority. A lot of sleep issues that I see of people, people just turn around and say, yes, I've not made it a priority. That is my 10 minutes for today on this Instagram Live on sleep. Thanks a lot to everyone who's joined. I'm gonna put this on Instagram TV, share it with your friends. I would love that. Have a great weekend.